Straight up the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 25 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week, as well as our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker, except for this episode, since we are having issues, at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, and after it is done, it is posted on all our outlets, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment and easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you would like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts, opinions, questions read on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP or by dropping a comment in the comments section on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I am continuing to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, the glorious Corporate Cappy. Can I say it? Finally, Corporate Cappy has returned to No Holds After a week absence with uh, corporate doings and corporate school, Yep, he's back on the Lowdown Show. Now, we're we're here. An interesting, interesting week in a WWE Kind and also of. on another note, as I want to begin the show, if you guys haven't already seen it, our last video posted, I'll bu- number episode number two in our unboxing series. Mine went fine. Yours is okay. Mine, however, made the list of Jericho. <laughs> you got the gift of Jericho. Coincidentally made the list of Jericho. <laughs> so if you haven't seen it, guys, it's the last video. Go watch it. on uh, Unboxing series number two, titled WB Shot Fail. Um, I ordered the Kevin Owens plaque, the, the universal title one. Okay. And I, and I wanted the ring canvas one, but I fucked up when they, they first came out. Okay. I, I was so excited. I had both of them in there just to compare shipping and taxes. And I accidentally click X on the canvas one and I just wasn't paying attention. I was at work trying to order this on my phone and I just cut, Hey, yes, yes, yes. Give my, take my money. Just take my money and give me my plaque. And I ended up ordering the twenty nine ninety nine one, which you know what, it's fine, whatever. I'll take it. I love Kevin Owens; he's one of my boys. I just want the plaque. I waited like a month and a half for this thing to get shipped, and I finally got it yesterday. Unbelievable! I was so pit- I was so pumped. I'm like, all right, we're gonna do another unboxing video. We're gonna get this on the YouTube channel. So stoked! So if you're watching, this is like li- this is like live reaction. Like this, this this is exactly what I went through, and I was so shocked. So I'm opening it. I get to the end night when I finally open the last part of the box. I get fucking Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho beating Enzo and Cass at SummerSlam plaque instead of my fucking plaque. What the hell? And your receipt. My yes. receipt that was in the goddamn box said WWE Universal Champion Kevin Owens plaque. That is not the same plaque. How do you, how do you screw that up? Are they blind? Are, are they... The box in the order said Kevin Owens Universal Champion. The plaque you put in there had Chris Jericho on it. How do you get that wrong? <laughs> For what? And another thing, it's a SummerSlam. It happened on Raw. How do you get that wrong? This doesn't make any sense. You just gotta drink it in, man. No, I'm not drinking it in. So I had to call the WWE shop... Uh, 1-800 number. I spent like a half hour on thing of them putting me on hold for like the 20 minutes trying to figure out what to do because there's there must be a clusterfuck over there. I guess this doesn't happen regularly because she didn't even know what to do on the phone. <laughs> so she finally says, okay, what you need to do is you need to take a picture of the plaque itself, the wrong order, send it to the email at shop at com, and then we'll go from there. We'll call you within 48 hours after. Uh, really? <laughs> really? So not only do they make you wait longer, they want you to send I'm that demanding. One I don't care what they have to do to make it. I want the ring canvas one. This is <laughs> bullshit. I'm not giving them this plaque back. Too bad. That's mine now. That's your fault for being idiots and sending me that plaque. That is all your fault. I'm not sending them back. They're going to say we're going to send you a box to send it back. Uh-uh. Not happening. I don't know where the plaque went. It's, it disappeared. I don't know. It's gone. Poof. It's gone. 
<laughs> Unbelievable. I can't believe that. I would have been super pissed if my plaque would have came in. In like my reaction that. to the video, I was just so shocked. And as you say, you thought I would be even angrier. Trust me, after I was done the video, I was really mad. You went, you went into my room. I just threw everything all over the floor. I was so pissed off. <laughs> <sighs> Unbelievable. If you guys didn't watch it, go check it out. It's kind of funny. I did some, some clever video editing, especially at the end. Oh, yeah. But into the lowdown show, guys. We'll start off as we always do with your tweets out there. Man, we have a lot have this a week. Lot. <laughs> Again, <laughs> you guys, we appreciate the love and all the tweets. We might have you. to start putting a cap on these tweets. Maybe <laughs> okay. like three. It's going to take up half the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might have to do like the top three tweets. Who, who wins tweets of the night? <laughs> um, so anyways, we'll get into your tweets. We'll start off with Tony Mercer at Recram Why Not on Twitter. He puts... At Noah was bar WB. Pretty bland overall, and this is talking about Raw. Pretty bland overall. Cruiserweights were great, but that crowd should be banned from all events with those stupid chants. 100% agree. He also puts the main event was a lot of fun. Jericho and KO are a riot, and mixing them with Enzo and Cass was the right move. Mm. You know what? I, I agree. That was that was smart. Both, both are uh, comedic kind of style tag teams and putting them against each other. I mean, that Raw was shit. I'm glad it ended in that way, but they could have done a better ending to the Raw, but I'm glad it ended on a high note instead of a boring, yeah, shitty note. and now you have a like plaque to commemorate show. those four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to Irrelevance at Forlorn on Twitter. He's got a hell of a tweet here. Bear with me. He puts, so Raw starts with Roman thought it was instantly going <laughs> to... Okay, so Raw starts with Roman thought it was instantly going to be bad. Little did I know it was a match... It, it was a match. <laughs> okay. Uh, match at the start of the show. What the fuck? Rusev gets no entrance. WTF. Plus the match was better than the last night's one. <laughs> F the ending. McFoley talks with Cesaro and Sheamus. Loved the segment. Even though the outcome was the, was nice. I don't know how you agree with that outcome. I have a biased opinion about that. We'll get into that. <laughs> um, two, opposite tag t- two opposites tag teaming in their match against the Jobbers was great. Cesaro not selling those shoulder shots was funny as hell. Also, I'm excited to see what's next for this tag team. But tag teams, New Day and Gals and Anderson. Uh, the club, rest in peace. <laughs> uh, New Day retains. I'm so done with the New Day. They just did a 360 for me. They went from fucking awful to amazing and now fucking annoying. <laughs> Gals and Anderson need to be on SmackDown because Raw has buried them since the split. Stephanie... A face or a heel, no one cares. Bailey versus a local jobber, what the hell? <laughs> Drew Gulak on Raw, but doesn't get good showing. What the fuck? I wanted him to crush a motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Forlorn man, your tweets are interesting as always. He also puts Tom Phil- Tom Phillips shorter than TGP and Kendra combined. What the hell? The second the cruiserweights gets a second match. Yes, love the shit out of that. Can't wait for James Ellsworth to fight for the belt. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> I really hope that never happens. And the Jericho just gold. Overall, it was a mess show. F the crowd for those chants. Agreed. The crowd was really bad. Where were they this week? Uh, Cincinnati? Yeah, Cincinnati. During the magic of the match of TG... Oh, yeah, they are bad during the uh, TJP and Nice match. Six out of ten, in his opinion. My question for tonight are, what do you think of Seth's current spot as a babyface? And where do you see Gallus and Anderson going? Well, I love that he's a baby face. 100%. He makes a good baby face. He's such a great heel, though. Yeah, I know. He it, It's almost like he can do both parts really good. But he's actually... I think he's over the top better as a heel than he would as a baby yes, face. Yes, I just, think he's got more potential. It's like yeah. Jericho. Jericho's a good face, but he's, he's just a better like heel. an unbelievable yeah. heel. And as and, for Anderson yeah. and Gallows, I mean, it sucks that they keep getting buried. Like they, they, they brought these guys over to be so big. I don't know if this is a shot at New Japan or what, but like they just keep getting buried by the New Day. Can we have a trade? Yeah, we need. There's got to be this like massive trade coming up soon because we need something done. Yeah. Um. Anyways, move on to a new person tweeting at us. So mm-hmm. hello to Who Trans Superman on Twitter. Who Trans Superman? He puts pretty unsatisfying raw. Sometimes the three hours really drags on. Couldn't agree more. We definitely disagree with the three hour. We think it should literally be two hour. I mean, look how good SmackDown has been with just two hours in the show. It's just enough. Yeah, just enough. Um, moving on. At Salves94 on Twitter. He puts another boring show. Once again, three hours is too long and SmackDown is better. Simply put. And simply agree. Yep. 
And to the next set of raw tweets from our number one fan on Twitter, Michael Chow, at Real Michael Chow. He I feel plays, like he needs his own music. <laughs> Michael Chow, we'll probably work on getting you an entrance theme if you agree. And if you have any ideas, let us know. <laughs> or any requests. Or any requests. He puts, Raw was so bad, I stopped watching after the first hour. And from what I hear, so did the fans in Cincinnati Arena as well. Well, they're probably like, oh, we don't get no Dean Ambrose. No, they were such casual fans. It was ridiculous. Yep. Um, he also puts pros. Stephanie McMahon gets revenge for the fans and makes Mick Foley look like a corporate bitch. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> I love it. Cons fully screws the fans and makes Shizaro and Sheamus the new League of Nations. Roman and Rusev pull a SummerSlam BS ending. It's true. They had the same freaking ending at SummerSlam. I don't know what the hell that was. His question is, who is your early Roy Rumble winner pick? His is Finn Balor. I believe he can heal in time and make a surprise return for the win. Uh, that that kind of makes sense, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see it happening. Finn Balor is a good one. Oh, if yeah. I had to pick someone as a Roy Rumble winner, it's going to be interesting to see what they do because... I guess it's whoever person from the brand. Like, how did they used to do it back then? It, it was Raw and SmackDown together, right? And then whoever won would get to choose which title to go for, right? Yeah. On bo- it didn't. It, it's weird how that how they worked it out like that. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's going to be the same this time. They probably because they want to keep the superstars on yeah. each other's brands. They probably just say if you if a Raw superstar wins, yeah. they have to go for yeah. the universal title. So Finn Balor is a good pick. If I had to pick anyone else, I think it'll be a Raw superstar. Yeah. That's all I can Maybe. say. Maybe right it now. could be a SmackDown one to boost them up. I'm going to be Let's biased go. as hell and say Baron Corbin. I'm going to say. It's the most unlikely pick there. Sami Zayn. Ooh, you know what? That's actually a really good pick. You're right. That could be it. Sami Zayn might be the winner. You heard it here first from Corporate Cappy, folks. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next set of tweets from Craig Messi on Twitter about SmackDown. Thought it was okay. Not as good as Raw. Like the main event. Thought that was really good. He also puts Raw won this week. Really good matches. Like the tag title and love the idea of Sheamus and Cesaro teaming up. <laughs> Craig, you gave the, the most awesome reaction to Cobra Cappy here I've ever seen. Next. He put MVPs of the week. Go to Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Funny as ever. Plus the Usos new look. What do you think? Who said this? Craig Messi on Twitter. That Craig the, guy? The court, the, uh, yeah. He is the, well, now he's Craig on tour <laughs> is his name on Twitter. He needs to go he's back the, to that uh, Craig the guy. consolation winner for Clash of Champions. Wow. Yeah, congratulations to Michael Chow and Craig Messi, by the way, for our Clash of Champions winner. We are working on getting stuff to you in the mail. Bear with us. Okay, just the mail over here in Canada is really slow, so <laughs> bear with us. <laughs> but yeah, you know what? I agree with him, though. And what do you think about the Usos' new look? I love it. And they're a little the bit Usos more gangster look. looking now. You got new music. Yep. I like fits. the thug music. Yep. Love the heel Usos. Love it. Uh, Forlorn also tweets about SmackDown, but didn't care for the start. Neither did I care for Teddy Long putting together two tag team matches. <laughs> uh, he also puts the Usos new look and music is perfect. Ziggler and Miz stole the show again. And to be honest, I got interested in the Randy Orton and Wyatt segments. See, I actually enjoyed them. I know you didn't, but. Mm, I have mixed feelings. <laughs> He also puts, especially Randy putting back on the mask. Fact is, Kurt Hawkins is amazing, and the main event was all right. <laughs> That's a Kurt Hawkins fact for you right there. Yeah. I Another love this Kurt guy. Hawkins fact is I fucking hate Kurt Hawkins fact. <laughs> the show is very good, and not a lot of authority figures shown, which is good. It, sh- it shows, it's basically showing more about the wrestlers, he's saying. SmackDown, yes. Raw, they well, that's what he was talking much. about. He was talking about SmackDown. Which is good. And we have a, a special special uh, tweet that I read actually earlier about that. Um, I guess Dan O'Brien took a jab at that. Or not a tweet. He said it on Talking Smack. Oh. That uh, basically just taking a shot that Raw has too many authority figures on TV and less wrestlers. Ha. Huh. Gamma NU1 on Twitter simply puts for SmackDown the picture of the NXT logo. <laughs> he really didn't like SmackDown this week. Hmm. Okay, interesting. And we'll end off. Our SmackDown tweets with our number one fan, Michael Chow, at Real Michael Chow, where he puts both shows were a big letdown. SmackDown was plagued with way too much non-wrestling. Who ran the show this week? Seriously. He also put pros. SmackDown is only a two-hour show. Thank God. And he also puts cons. The Bray and Orton show take over SmackDown. SmackDown forgets it's a two-hour show and take 
and talk for an hour. GM no shows, only three matches. What the fuck? Okay, well, so like, I kind of like that. There's no authority figure being the dominant role on SmackDown. Like yeah. there is on Raw. It looks it's like they're much, trying to make that yeah a thing now between Raw and SmackDown. There's like, too much Stephanie and Mick yeah. on Raw, and I feel like yeah, there could be a little bit more Daniel Bryan Incorporation, but I like it that they're leaving it to the talent. Mm-hmm. Interesting, but. He puts also, should SmackDown rename its pay-per-view to No Mercy Clash of Champions Part 2? <laughs> should be called Dolph Ziggler's No Mercy. <laughs> Since every title is being defended. Good job, creative. <laughs> yeah, you can see it that way. But you know what? It, it's sort of slowly shaping up to be a good pay-per-view now that with the intensity of the Ziggler and Miz thing on SmackDown, which well, we'll get into. Like I told um, you a couple days ago, I think Clash of Champions was supposed to be a bragging rights tape pay-per-view where we're supposed to be champions versus champions of other shows. Yeah. But it was too close to the brand split. So maybe the next class of champions will be something like maybe. that. Um, we also get from a question from him. What is your opinion of this second brand extension compared to the first one? Why did the first brand split seem to work so well? Hmm. What for like, I think, I think he means like the very first brand split. Like when, uh, was it Vince, Vince McMahon and, and Ric Flair? Flair? Yeah. Why did the first one work so well? Mm-hmm. It's a tough question. Oh, because it was a new it was a new thing. We hadn't seen it before. Yeah, and I think also too, it was uh the company of WCW dying and people were interested to see, okay, now there's this other brand with free agent wrestlers coming in, they're gonna need to split the rosters up. It, it was it was a new thing back then. So it, it it almost you can say it's better back then as well. Yeah. But Compared to now, I think now it's just they haven't done it in a long time. Like seriously, they've done like drafts in the yeah. past, but they are lame. They like, didn't mean anything. Yeah, we we think we're hoping that they don't just go back to the old ways and just scrap it like they did the last yeah. time, and then have people appear on both shows, and it would just be just bland. It just, it's like what's the point of even having a draft every year if it's just you're gonna appear on both shows? Like when John Cena got drafted to Raw and then back to SmackDown, I'm like, what the fuck is that? They just wasted like. They just wasted a draft. Like, what the hell was the point of that? And there was a big trade in the first draft as yes. well. Triple See, H was trading. We need a trade in the current regime right now. I know the past the draft, but we need a trade. I want to see, like, Cesaro and the club go to SmackDown for, I don't know who. Or something. The Ascension and Dino. I can't even think. Bray the Ascension Wyatt. and Bray Wyatt. Oof. <laughs> Eric Owen, get off TV. No. <laughs> Yeah, get off my TV here. Uh, so, we're going to do the second part of the show. Our Luke Gallows Polls, our Twitter poll segment. Hit that Luke Gallows Polls music. That's right. Welcome to the Luke Gallows Polls, our Twitter poll segment. Brought to you by at WWE Polls on Twitter. Go check them out, guys. They do some serious polls, some funny polls. All polls for your liking and for you to interact with. So go check them out. And they are our source for the Luke Gallows Polls. And we turn it over to the host of Luke Gallows Polls, as always, Cobra Cappy. We'll start off Luke Gallows Polls. Will the New Day pass Demolition's record of longest tag team reign Mm, in WWE history? And they have to go, I think, like another 76, 77 days. I'm going to say yes. Yes, 78%. Exactly. You know what? I, I think they will. I think they're trying to make them now. There's this new generation of talent, this new era of talent. They're trying to have, uh, get them to be the record holders now and beat out the past generation. So I think New Day is definitely going to be the longest reigning tag team champions. And then soon after that, they'll probably lose the belts. Yeah. I was. I, I mean, I thought a lot of people thought they were going to lose it at uh, Clash of Champions, but mm-hmm. I think they wanted that 400 day reign yeah. to hold yeah. on to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which one of these matches was match of the night at Clash of Champions? Owens versus Rollins, Women's Triple Threat, Cesaro versus Sheamus, and Jericho versus Zayn. Mm. Either Jericho versus Zayn or Owens versus Rollins. Owens versus Rollins, 34%. Women's Triple Threat, 30 Cesaro, Sheamus, 29 And Jericho, Zayn, 7 How did that only get 7 That was a great match. Probably because people are pissed that Jericho buried Zayn again. But Jer- that's what Jericho does. Yeah, man. he's been burying people all year, guys. You should come to expect that. That's why I keep picking in, him now at pay-per-views. I just got to keep picking Jericho. I know, especially against new talent. It's yeah. great. Uh, this is an interesting one. Which one of these superstars have been the MVP of Raw since the brand split? Ooh. Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Chris Jericho, or Roman Reigns? Kevin Owens. 40% Kevin Owens. Yep. 
my vote, Chris Jericho was second, twenty seven percent. Yeah, they're both. They're, they're. I'd say they're tie, tie. Twenty percent Seth Rollins and thirteen Roman Reigns. <laughs> Why is he your MVP? He got suspended for thirty days. He should be not considered an MVP whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, going off the same type of poll, which one of these superstars has been the MVP of SmackDown since the brand split? Dean Ambrose, The Miz, AJ Styles, or Dolph Ziggler? AJ Styles. 100%. 60%, 60% AJ The champ Styles. that runs the camp, baby. Dolph AJ Styles. 19 Ambrose, 17 Miz, 4 Ziggler. No. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just can't win. God. <laughs> oh, poor yeah, DZ. AJ Styles is the champ that runs the camp, so, you know. He is. I'm I'm surprised John Cena hasn't wasn't on yeah, this. Why poll. is it John Cena on the SmackDown poll? God, that guy's gonna freaking pass Ric Flair's record. Oh. He will. It's it's inevitable. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna cringe when that happens. <laughs> Should WWE replace the Universal Title with the old World Title Belt, the gold one? Yes or no? No. Yes, one was seventy five percent. Really? I think it's because people hate the look of their. You know what? It's grown on me a little bit, and I think they need to stick with the Universal Title, or yeah. else. It, what's the point of even doing it? Exactly. Like, you, it's a new generation now. You got to stick with it. You can't just make something and revert back to the old world title belt. It, it's gone now. It's retired. It, it didn't even start in WWE. Now. You can't even be proud of that world title. It started in freaking back in NWA and then went over to WCW. Like I it's not an tr- original WWE belt. And WWE's trying to go away from the old stuff. They're trying yeah. to make their own new era stuff. Now. Exactly. So, uh, will Cesaro and Sheamus win the tag titles? Yes or no? I really hope not. I'd vote no a hundred times on this. Yes, fifty eight percent. Why? <laughs> Why do people want this to happen? Because I guess they want it to be like the Slater. It's and Rhino stupid. Thing. This is screwing Cesaro once again. <laughs> uh, next What's poll. your opinion of how Raw is using the cruiserweight so far? Great, good, okay, or terrible? great? Good one with thirty nine. It's great, great. Great with second twenty eight. Okay, twenty one. Uh, is the 12. question how they're using them? I guess, but how's terrible 12%? How is that even... What do you want them to do? Yeah, like, literally. I don't understand. Like, what else are they supposed to do than have matches with each other? Like, are they supposed to, like, face heavyweights? That can't happen. It doesn't happen like that. <laughs> Which one of these superstars will win the women's title match next week on Raw? Charlotte or the Ooh. boss? I don't think it's her time Choose yet. Choose wisely I don't here. think it's her time yet, man. They're not going to have her win the title twice on Raw. That'd be bullshit. I think it's just going to be Charlotte again. She won with 59% though, Sasha, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't think it's her time yet. Okay. She's going to get screwed over by Dana once again. Miss Piggy herself. Miss Piggy. What's your opinion of this week's Raw? Great, good, okay, or terrible? That's terrible should have won that. Okay, 45%. Wow. <laughs> how, how, what was terrible? 31 Okay, second. was that second place? Yeah. That was garbage Raw. Great. <laughs> Who were the 8% that said it was great? <laughs> The casual fans. Uh, what's your opinion of the Usos' new entrance music? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. 79% up. thumbs up. up. Why do people say no? They're heels. What do you want them to have? Freaking Bailey-type exciting music? That's not going to happen. <laughs> that music right now that they have right now suits them. Their gimmick suits them. Yep. Their clothing suits them. These guys are perfect now. right now. It's good. What's your opinion? What was your opinion of the eight-man tag match on SmackDown? Great, good, okay, or terrible? I think it was good. Good, 43%. Yay, I got it right. Yep. Uh, We'll get a couple more here. What was your opinion of this week's SmackDown Live episode? Great, good, okay, or terrible? Mm, Okay. Great. One was 61%. Really? I think it's just because people thought Raw was so bad that they're going to vote SmackDown great. SmackDown won before the show even started. Yep. (laughs) So we've got uh, two more polls left here. What was your opinion of uh, the World Championship match between AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose? Great, good, okay, or terrible? Good. Great, 58%. Yeah, okay, it was great. It's like in between for yeah. me. Gray, good. I say good because <laughs> of the ending, which we'll get into. Yeah. And lastly, this is, I told you before, this poll is going to, sh- like, I was like, wow, okay. the results of this. Which one of these programs was better show this week, Raw or SmackDown? Raw won, didn't it? SmackDown 93%. Holy shit. 93%. Wow, that's Raw. like the biggest poll we've ever set on this show. Oh that's my it. god. Right there. Raw, 7%. Raw, you <laughs> fucking suck ass this week. Like, total ass. 93%. Which we're going to get into now in the Raw review. So I got some notes for Raw before we start. 
Raw this week was literally the most garbage episode of Raw since the brand extension. This was terrible. Like, the thought process behind some matches and segments was atrocious. Especially coming off their pay-per-view. This was t- champion. This was garbage. I feel bad for anyone at Arena. Actually, I don't because the crowd sucked. Cincinnati. That was ter- You guys started chanting goon chants in a fucking cruiserweight match. That's the best thing going on Raw. You guys probably would have cheered the milkman. <laughs> I think they were mad because Dean Ambrose wasn't there. Oh, yeah. The Cincinnati Since now, you casual fucking fans. I'll give a shout out to Indianapolis for Clash of Champions. They were a really good crowd. Yeah, they were good. But Cincinnati, step up your game. The only things that saved Raw this week, though, the, from that three-hour travesty and what you can call a wrestling show was the Cruiserweights and Jericho. That was the only things that saved Raw. That's it. It. That is it. In a night where there was like a presidential debate in the U.S. and would have you fought want people to tune in, and you want people to tune in for viewership, and you had also compete with Monday Night Football. They delivered to us on live TV a plate of pure, one hundred percent guaranteed, all natural horse shit. Uh. Certain. Nice and hot and fresh, ready for us to hot enjoy some like horse shit TV. Five dollar hot and ready. It was garbage. Well, I'm kind of happy that I missed it. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I was watching Monday Night Football, watching my Falcons win. This yeah. show was one jobber away from me going. <laughs> yep, Impact Wrestling. Let's go. So it was a milkman away. It was a milkman away <laughs> from being the worst show. I've ever seen. Well, you know what? I'm going to even call it. It's the worst Raw I've ever seen. Was it worse than the SmackDown? It's probably the- worse than one of the Raws in the PG era. I could have or, dealt with what that. What about one of the SmackDowns in the PG era? Oh, Maybe man. Even that crowd noise. that nonsense where I ranted all the time on our podcast. All the time in the last year. <laughs> actually, since we started the podcast. But we get into Raw. Raw opens up with the rematch of Reigns and Rusev for the U.S. title. So we already start with this hot garbage. So I heard this was the beginning. Like very first. Said, as soon as Raw turned on, Roman Reigns' entrance comes out. And Rusev's already in the ring, so we missed his Rusev's fucking entrance. entrance was jobbed. So in a three-hour show, you job a guy's entrance in the beginning of the show. That's great. And you said this match... Not only that, the match was 40 minutes longer. I'm 40 minutes, you couldn't fit his entrance in there. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. After tonight, this feud actually looks like he's going to carry on, though, into Hell in the Cell, which is probably going to be their rematch. But you know what? I can get kind of behind that. It's a good feud for Roman Reigns. Better I just hope they, the they plan to keep picture. the pace. They need to keep the pace. Push the pace. The rock they need shit. to stop having rematch after rematch and start adding stuff to the feud, some fuel, do something with it because it's just boring. <laughs> it's, it's bland. You had two matches in a row. You did the same thing you did at SummerSlam. You did the, the match before SummerSlam against them, and that, that match was better than actual SummerSlam match. And now you had the match at Clash of Champions, and then you have the same match right after, and it was just as bad. 40 minutes long. 40 minutes. This match lasted 40 minutes. We did not open Raw with the traditional opening segment. Instead, we got 40 minutes of pure garbage. Did they really? Are they really trying to push Roman Reigns that far to like get us get the fans to put him over to say, like, hey, he was in a 40-minute match? I don't know. It just was bad. It was even worse. It ended in a double countout. <laughs> you, you had a 40 minute it. match and a double count out are you kidding me could have been doing that for a what five the minute fuck match. is that you have a presidential debate in monday night football you're trying to compete with and you give us this 40 minutes of i don't even know what is what i watched it had two commercials two for that garbage this was the biggest waste of time i've ever had watching Raw. So after the double count out, did anything happen? Did Foley come out or No, nothing. Nothing. That was it. I how are you supposed to get people to keep watching and not switch a channel? When you get when you give us plain shit in, in our palm of our hands. This it, this was ridiculous. I can't believe Raw opened that way. You open up with a forty minute double count out. Oh it's it basically I, like the match never happened. Great. Fantastic. Wow. I'm so glad I watched that. That gets I, everyone excited, doesn't it? I'm not even American. I could have switched the debate and had a better time watching that. 
I bet the people in the arena are like, wow, two two hours and 20 more minutes of this. I can't yeah, this wait. great. <laughs> they probably were. Those damn casual re- rejects out there. Freaking don't know what the hell to chant. Chang, this is awesome in that kind of match. Yeah, okay. Unreal. So we move on, and we get the grand decision of the worst of seven series. And boy, was it grand. Foley invites both of them to the ring. There's some annoying arguing going on between both of them, Cesaro and Sheamus, trying to say who 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 should be the who should be the clear cut winner. You know, it didn't end in the win. Cesaro was kind of right that he was he was still in the ring, ready to fight, and Sheamus yeah. was gone. It was just stupid. I, I was annoyed <laughs> listening to them. It sounded like two four year olds arguing with each other. Then Mick sounds like he just blows a fuse and makes this decision. He says that Cesaro and Sheamus will be a tag team. And compete towards the tag team titles. Because he said that he can't choose a winner. I have both of them deserve a championship. A match. serious headache thinking about this. Who thought this was a good idea? You go from putting Cesaro in a month long feud with Sheamus, which is already stupid to begin with. Then you give us this bullshit of putting him together. <laughs> In competing for the tag titles. What? Why? Why? What? How is this logical? I don't understand. You who actually out there who want to see this, I, I, I shake my head at you people. Whoever likes this, whoever wants, I, I, I see all over Twitter that some people actually like this. I question your decision making in life. And this is why I have trust issues when people say they want to see Seamus, Seamus, or whatever the fuck his name is. Sheamus and Cesaro win the tag team championships. Sheamus is just bland as hell. Who wants to... S- Nobody cares about him anymore. Like, they could... Okay, yeah, they put on a good match seven, whatever. But th- that's enough. You you end it. Why would you put them together? Why? We, we got the League of Nations 2.0. Yeah, League of Nations 2.0. Because that really worked out the first time. God. Why? Poor Cesaro. They, just, they, they, they give Cesaro. us the horse shit and they just keep shoveling more on top of us as we keep watching this goddamn show. I wonder what Cesaro's reaction was when they told him backstage that after the seven match series, you're going to be in a tag team with this goof now. I, I don't. I I could have had a better time watching an independent circuit wrestling show that I've never heard of before with people I've never heard of before than watching that crap. I, I've heard rumors that Cesaro's contract is up soon. He isn't sure if he's going to renew it. I don't blame him if he doesn't want to renew it. Like as much as I would miss him, well, I don't blame him. I don't blame him if he wants to get paired with Sheamus as a tag team. Who the fuck wants that? And he still hasn't held. How are you going to get anywhere getting paired up with Sheamus? He hasn't got a push since his first debut as Antonio Cesaro. Yeah, with the United the, the, States. The famous era where Vince time. was just dropping people's first names like crazy. Yeah, I'm surprised Biggie Langston is not called just Langston. <laughs> well, he, he did drop the Langston. Yeah, part. he was dropping people's first names at that time. So Alexander I'm like, oh, you can call him Langston. Yeah. Oh, uh, anyways, poor so we move on. We get Clash of Champions rematch number two. New Day versus the club. We get the typical New Day promo right before their match. Funny as always. I can't argue with that. It leads into their match. Um, was actually not too bad. There was actually a spot where Kofi even got busted open. And he actually received nine stitches afterwards, which is actually a really funny picture on Twitter. It shows the doctor stitching them up and then they're like photo bombing and they're all smiling together. <laughs> of course they were. Uh, I guess it's another way to boost the ratings to try to get the ratings boosted to have another yeah. title match. And then New Day retains the titles on day number 400 of their tag team title reign. So this looks like it's going to carry on to Clash of Champions as well, or uh, Hell in a Cell as well. Maybe. I mean, what else are they going to do? How long is this feud going to last? How long are they going to keep burying the club? That's why I think that they need to make a trade or Because, like, why is there not another tag team? I mean, you have Cesaro and Sheamus, I guess. Oh, my God. I don't know when that's going to happen. I hope that gets... I hope there's, like, a triple threat tag team. Something different. And you've got Enzo and Cass floating around. Yeah, what the hell? Around. These guys deserve a tag team title shot. How come they get subjected to getting job to the freaking Shining Stars? And, and then, then later in the main event. And then Jericho and Owen. Like, they're just floating around, not doing much. I don't understand. There's someone backstage right now that's huffing paint. Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes, what are you doing? I'm I'm honestly shocked that like Golden Truth hasn't got a title match yet. Where the hell have they been? <laughs> There's a lot of missing people right now on the roster. I'm like 
4K. We had a brand split, uh, brand split for a reason. Raw's even three hours, and we still can't fit everyone on it. Another one, Summer Rae. Where the hell has she been? They're supposed to have this women's. Oh, apparently, actually, revolution. I read she's uh, she's like injured or something. I think she's injured. I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> we never seen her at, yeah. at, on uh <laughs> But they didn't, they match. failed to tell us that she's injured. And hey, is, thanks. is Foxy alive after the clash? Yeah, we don't know if she's match. still alive. <laughs> thanks for the update, WWE. <laughs> so we we'll move on to, to to quote the most useless squash match in WWE history. Out of all people, including Strowman, Nia Jax, and for some reason Bo Dallas, <laughs> Bailey. Faces a local jobber. Why? First of all, she's a face facing a local jobber. Second of all, we already know what she does. It's not, and she goes from a a, a title match to a, facing a jobber. Like that's gonna help anybody. Why? Why isn't Nia Jack starting a feud with Bailey? Why did she face this random chick named Anna Fields? Who the fuck cares about Anna Fields? No one gives a shit. Why is she to face Bailey in a one minute and a half match? What did Bailey need to show? What was the reasoning behind this? I want to know why, why this happened. Why? And then Nia Jax wasn't even on the. On and Ra- the- she wasn't even on Raw. What is happening? They they just float. They go back and forth so much. Like they give us squash matches, then they go in a feud, and then they go back to squash. They give us good shows, and then what? Did they just suddenly forget to write this show this week? What the hell just did they happened? Ma- did they make it before it went out? Oh, Bailey, we don't have anything for you. Yeah, so you know uh, what? Okay, uh, you, get out there. Yeah, you too. What are your name? Anna Fields? Yeah, yeah, put that on. Get out there. Go get a belly to belly, okay? If you get hurt, whatever. You'll be okay. They should have used uh, Britt Baker or Ariel Monroe again. <laughs> should have used no one because this shouldn't <laughs> even happened. There should have been Nia Jax coming out and challenging Bailey. Then you have two women's feud on Raw in a three-hour show. In a two-hour show on SmackDown, you can fit two. They fit two women's feuds. They fit every, three. Every, actually, three. Every woman on every woman on SmackDown is has a feud. Somewhat- Raw's three hours. It only t- fucking two or three have a feud. What is wrong? I'm seriously. we we talk about it all the time. I'm contemplating and just stop watching Raw, and it's so hard for me to do that because. My boy Kevin Owens is on Raw. I love Enzo and Cass. I love New Day. I love Jericho. It's so hard to stop watching the cruiserweights. The cruiserweights. Bailey, Paige, when she has How do I not out. watch Raw, but then you give us this bullshit every time? I'm going to have to start watching the highlights. Honestly, like, what's like, happening? Raw's more of the entertainment show because that's what they want. This they is want. not entertaining. Well, no, that's what they want. They want the more. For the casual fans. Sorry. For the casual fans, casual. it's entertaining. That's what they want for Raw because they want it to be, you know, the flag. Yeah, I'm watching show. SmackDown. I, I might just start watching Raw highlights. This is really getting really ridiculous. It's, it's just the third hour just plummets in ratings. Yeah. Everyone's done by then. And the extra We're hour. worn out because of the stupid shit you give us every time the, in the, the first two hour hours. Filler, it, it's like promos or squash matches. And Nothing else commercials. <laughs> Nothing else relevant or decent in that other third hour. Yeah. So we move on. We get a brief moment backstage where Foley just gets his ass chewed by Stephanie McMahon. Just reams them out for his decision making lately and literally Foley just looks like he's the most hurt person in the in the world. He's going to come about as mankind. So I don't know if this is like teasing uh, a decision on Foley's job in the future but something's going to happen. I think as we said before in previous podcasts that Mick Foley will probably end up getting fired and someone's going to step in but this looks like it's a start because Stephanie literally lost her shit on Mick Foley. It's actually one of the few highlights we had on Raw this week. So we'll move on. And we're moving on. And we got some light at the end of that tunnel. We get a cruiserweight match. Yes. Drink it in, man. <laughs> I'm surprised you're saying that after. We the get whole Cedric package. Alexander and Rich Swan versus Drew Gulak, who's had a, pro- had a promising showing at the Cruiserweight Classic, and Lince Dorado. All these guys actually had an impressive uh, tournament at Cruiserweight Classic, so it's nice to see that all these guys are in the same match together as a tag team. Uh, the match was actually really unreal. A lot of good spots. Man, the Cruiserweights are just so good now. Way better than what they used to be back in the day. Like They're, they're just so much better. They've got better talent in the Cruiserweight division now than they ever used to. <laughs> wonder what, um, what you say about your boy Funaki would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Literally was probably the only good thing to Raw though, like the top good thing. If I had to like rank my my top moments on Raw, Cruiserweights would be at the top 100%. Period. 
Uh, Swan and Alexander pick up the win. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do now leading up. Now we actually have a Cruiserweight champion. And are they going to start feuds or are we going to keep getting showcases until all the Cruiserweights debut? And then we get we start the division off then. Because now it looks like every week more and more Cruiserweights are debuting. So my, my, my favorite is Cedric Alexander. That guy is unreal. S- incredible talent. Incredible, like, stamina this guy has in a match. It's crazy. His finisher is unreal. He's just so athletic. I love this guy. He's Triple H's boy, too, so he's probably going to get a good push as well. I can't add much. I didn't see. The, the You'll have to turn back and look at it, and we'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> but we'll move on. Oh, God. I guess Cesaro and Sheamus versus, you guess it. You guessed it. Local jobbers. Oh, yeah. Best thing going today on Raw. Local jobbers. We get Cesaro and Sheamus facing two of them. We get our boys Cutler and Williams, the local jobbers from Cincinnati. But who the fuck cares? Wow. Uh, basically what? a squash usual tag team match where and they try. Sheamus and Cesaro. Yeah, just trying to impress long. each other. And, and yeah. you know, they one of them wants to get the, the win and show off and, and the other. And then I just. Ugh. It was a bro- <laughs> I can't get anyway. behind this. How do you showcase this new tag team against local jo- Why? <laughs> I can't. What? what? I seriously, being I, local jobbers, how does that make you look anywhere close to being? This was relevant? fucking useless. This, this, I don't know. To me, why didn't they face another tag team on Raw? It doesn't make you look strong, in my opinion. You just you just beat up randos that aren't even on the Raw. Why didn't they what face the mean? Shining Stars? Where the hell were the Shining Stars? Where's Golden Truth? Why did they have to face local jobbers? I. <laughs> D- decision making was is, I I can't even talk about it I can't like literally we have at least two or three jobber matches every week it's Monday night job Monday That's night jobbers is. we're calling it that from now on <laughs> we're moving on an entering segment with Charlotte and Dana and Sasha Banks yeah Charlotte comes out starts boosting uh, her title win at Clash of Champions uh, Sasha ends up coming out uh, claims that she wasn't pinned and demands a rematch uh, Charlotte not says not tonight. But next week in Los Angeles on Raw, they're going to have a women's championship match. And it does get confirmed that it is going to happen next week on Raw. Sasha ends up smacking the absolute shit out of Charlotte, like mm. dead in the face. Mm. And then ends up clearing the ring after that. And then yeah, Sasha standing tall. When is Dana going to finally stop with this Charlotte ass kissing stuff? You know why? Because they, re- they refuse to push other women on Raw. If she was on SmackDown, she'd have her own feud. As much as I love Sasha, this is just getting bland to me. Exactly. It's like, why are they changing it up? I guess they they tried to add Bailey in it, even though Bailey didn't really. Deserve yeah, and now she she faced a local jobber. They completely just kicked her out of the picture, like she wasn't even in the match. But you can't even have Nia Jax in a feud because Charlotte's a heel. Yeah, and I know it's like almost too soon for Bailey, but they should have separated Dana from Charlotte and had Dana feud with Bailey. Some sort of way, I don't know. Have Dana screw over Bailey for the title and have them feud from that. Yeah. Why did that happen? Instead, we get Dana still kissing Charlotte's ass and Bailey facing some random name Anna Fields on it's just, Raw. It's a clusterfuck. They don't know <laughs> what to do. Fantastic. What booking? At least SmackDown is incorporating all their women together somewhat. Yeah. This booking just needs to be means. deleted. Delete. 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 <laughs> So move on, and yes, Cruiserweight match number two. All right, another plus for Raw. We get TJ Perkins versus Tony Nese. Uh, I guess this is basically a showcase match for TJ Perkins as a Cruiserweight Can champion. Talk about TJ Perkins' entrance. That's fucking awesome. The max health. Yeah, and, like, the <laughs> and then, like the coins and the hearts music. leading up the entrance way. That his entrance is unreal. Um, They're talking about in the pre-show too how like that's probably the best entrance they've ever seen. It's crazy. This guy's gonna be so huge, and just suck because the Cincinnati crowd couldn't get behind this. They're chanting CM Punk during this match. Cincinnati's been added to the list of Jericho. They've added to the list of terrible crowds. Unbelievable. It was a really good match, too. I, I was just—I think I read all over Twitter how people were pissed that this crowd wasn't paying attention to this match. Like, what were they we're giving gold, and they chanted CM Punk and other useless goon chants. Like, CM Punk was my boy, but come on, guys. Give it a fucking rest. He's in the UFC. He's not coming back. I've come to terms with that. I have accepted that fact that he's not coming back. So do all of you. And you have to ruin something that's finally 
something worth you're watching. Getting excited for Raw for is the cruiserweights, and then you're burying it. Yeah. So TJ ends up picking up the victory. So good for him. Um, Obviously, he's going to fight Brian Kendrick. For a lot week. of people that don't know out there, TJ Perkins actually was on TNA. If you anyone remembers watching TNA back then or any time before that, he was called Suicide on TNA. That full on, that full suit mask kind of guy. And then they 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 changed his name to Manic after TJ Perkins left. So whatever. Um, moving on to the final uh, segment of Raw highlight reel with Kevin Owens. Um, these are another one of the best things of Raw that happened tonight. Other than that, Raw was shit, plain and simple. Jericho is truly the best thing going on Raw right now. That's and the I guy said. doesn't even have the world championship. <laughs> if this guy was the world champion, I'd be 100% okay with that and would love watching Raw every Still, week. Still, after all these years, he finds a way to not be bland. Yeah. Jericho, best in the world. He's the greatest of all time, and that goat saying that he has... I'm starting to believe it. He's been able to adapt in every era that he's been in. Seriously. Something that isn't boring. He went to, from WCW to the Attitude Era. He survived that. Then went to the Ruthless Aggression Era. Survived that. He even survived left, the PG Era. Left. Came back to the pre-PG Era. Survived that. Came back in the PG Era. Became world champion a couple of times. Survived that. And he came back. And he's surviving the reality era. And now he's surviving the new era. This guy is just the greatest of all time. Plain and simple. This guy is the best. <laughs> Rollins tries to come out. They, they're trying, like antagonizing him. And then like security comes out and stops him. And then just that's it. I love the one point where Jericho just said, yeah, we're the, we're, we're the universal champion. And then <laughs> Owens like looks at him like, what? Oh, I see some deception there. I think, I think Jericho is going to turn on Owens or some vice versa. So they might have like a triple threat. Remember like you said yeah, the original Finn plans. Balor was hurt? Yeah, so I think that's going to happen. It's going to be Rollins, Owens, and Jericho at Hell in a Cell. Fuck, I'm, I'm all for that. I'd love to see that. So yeah, but Ra- the thing that pissed me off here is that when the security guards push Rollins to the back, he didn't come back out at all and try to push past security like Rollins would, should do and would do. So it made him look weak. Yeah. So I, And I think this is the baby face in him. This is Now he's baby face. He can't do that anymore. But baby faces have done that before. Triple H, Tron Cena. When they've been faces, they've been doing that before. Why didn't he just push his way past everybody and get in the ring and start beating up Jericho and Owens? That's what people want to see. They don't want to see the baby face that just goes in the back yeah. and tucks his tail behind his legs. And that was it. And then for some reason, out of the blue... We get Enzo and Cass's music hitting. So I'm like, oh, these guys are still alive. Wow. One of the best tag teams on Raw is actually getting some time on Raw. I was so surprised. And basically, they come out at the end of Raw where probably no one's watching anymore. Great. What booking. Fantastic this week. So Enzo and Cass come out. They cut a promo on both of them. It's pretty funny. Uh, It leads into a tag team match. It ends up being a really decent match. And then Owens and Jericho pick up the victory, Again? pairing Enzo and Cass. Again, just like SummerSlam. <laughs> just like your new exciting plaque that you have. I don't know what's worse. If that goes, <laughs> I think it's added to the list. This episode of Raw and my plaque that I got, the wrong plaque, it's added to the list. You better believe it. It. <laughs> wow. But wow. yeah, Raw gets a really bad score this week. Two out of ten for me. Two out of and 10. that two is only from the cruiserweights and Jericho. That last segment. That's it. That is it. I didn't see. It. It. I didn't see enough of it to be able to give it a fair evaluation. So I'll just go with what you said. Two out of ten. It was terrible. It was garbage. Anyone would agree with that. Anyone who doesn't, I don't understand. You must be one of the Cincinnati crowd and a basic casual fan because you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. And I'll say it right now. Argue with me if you want to. I don't care. We'll move on to the SmackDown review. This show won this week before it even started. Before the before we got the SmackDown intro, it already won. I already knew it was going to be good. Like there, I didn't even need to watch the show to know it was going to be good. It ended up being good. I mean, that being said, SmackDown. I mean, it kind of barely won this week. I thought it was a good SmackDown. Um, they had a chance to beat Raw way out of the water. And, but I think SmackDown only showed that they didn't need to do anything to beat Raw this week. They really didn't even need to try. So what they didn't, do you think they didn't I think they they, they, they a gave show? a good show, but I think that if they wanted to go over the top and start, just kick Raw's ass completely, they could have, but they didn't. I think they just, it, it's another jab at Raw saying, look, we, we, we put out a product out there, but we didn't try our best. 
We just um, said, you know, we know we're going to beat you, so we're just going to put some generic shit out there. And they kind of put some good things here and there into SmackDown this week as well, but it, it kicked Raw way out of the water, even after that. Uh, it, it, they won. Where's Shane O'Mac been, anyway? I don't know. I think maybe because this goes back to when, remember, when he first came back, he also had some things he wanted to do as well, so yeah. maybe he's doing some side projects as well, and that's I mean, why Daniel Bryan's there. He's- leaving it for well, that's what they said back when they first announced commissioners gm commissioners were there to oversee the gm's decisions it's trying to show that shang man doesn't need to be there because that's how much he trusts daniel bryan and maybe they're trying to show that stephanie's micromanaging yeah and it doesn't trust mick foley enough that she can't be there without you know decisions not being made so the two hour show definitely works though 100 percent um less bullshit more wrestling plain and simple um daniel and shane basically off to again i we just said off tv this week and it's a good job you know what i agree with it, it more about the wrestling less about the, the politics only time we see daniel is on talking smack yeah and apparently uh daniel bryan took a jab at this on on talking smack so basically saying like oh we don't need to be on tv for a show to run and we were less authority figure based. I'm like, woohoo. There's another <laughs> jab. I love it. Raw. And I'll, I'm talking smack or as we call it, talking shit. And it is true. It's talking shit. <laughs> so we move on. Opening of Raw, the Randy Orton and Bray raw. White in ring promo. I said Raw. Oh, SmackDown. Sorry. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't Raw. But the in ring promo with Bray White and Randy Orton. Okay. It's kind of kind of better than what we've been seeing um after they have their promo on each other uh it was really like really slightly awkward promos too i don't know like but randy orton just looked like old radio orton like slow motion kind of style promo and it's I'm just like, hard to take bray wyatt seriously when he never wins a fucking match yeah he, he, how is he the face of fear and the new face of fear and the, it's supposed to be this top heel on smackdown or one of them if he can't win a goddamn match not even against. I can't take him seriously. Kane. No. Uh, Randy starts leading or starts going backstage to look for Bray, and that's the end of the promo. Oh, yeah. wow! We get, <laughs> we get the the other promos later backstage. Yeah. Uh, then leads next thing we get is the uh, Mer- uh, eight man tag team American Alpha and Slater and Rhino versus the Usos and the Ascension. Another new look for the Usos, uh, more thuggish, I guess, more gangster looking than uh, their old, I guess, their old new tire theme. from last week. They got a new entrance theme, and like it. it's not bad. You know, I can I can get behind that. It goes well with their their gimmick. Um, pretty decent match. It ends with Slater tapping out to the Usos. Of mm. course he did. So, Slater hasn't even won a match. So does this, this mean that the Ascension you, uh, are in the tag team picture for once? <laughs> They're in, like, the back burner. Now, what is this going to lead to? Did American Alpha do anything in this match? Yeah, yeah. They had a lot of good spots, but they were... I'm pretty sure it was the Ascension screwing around with them that led to the Usos picking the so victory up. it was up mostly on. about yeah. Slater and Rhino yeah. and the Usos. Okay. And I think, actually, that's already uh, a, a confirmed match at No Mercy, the Usos versus Slater and Rhino for the tag title. So, oh. I think the, the Ascension are going to feud now with American Alpha into No Mercy as well. Maybe the Ascension will get a pay-per-view match. Yeah, Hopefully. I'm hoping that the, the American Alpha and the Ascension have a No Mercy match, maybe in the pre-show, and the winner of that match gets to be number one contender for the tag team title match later on in, in, in the show on No Mercy. My thing is, where the fuck is Brazongo? <laughs> and where I, are oh, they? That was a tweet I forgot to read. I'm sorry, Irrelevance. I know... You put that, you put, he had a tweet to me, you put, and finally, where is Brazongo? Where are they? I don't know. It's exactly like Raw. Where's Golden Truth? Where the hell okay, were the Shining Stars this week? there's a difference week? between Golden Truth and Brazongo. Brazongo has a lot of potential. As <laughs> I don't know. singles competitors and as... I don't know where they are, but like, how do you even include them into this match? I don't know. I did, I did read the main event spoilers and Tyler Breeze faced Apollo Crews oh, on main God. event. Oh, God. So Apollo Crews got job to... Mi- and to- Baron Corbin, your boy, was oh on there. I think God. he faced Jack Swagger on main event. I guess. I mean, we could have had less of Randy Orton's backstage adventures and had that kind of match. But no, I guess that's more important. After they See, like, gave- both shows have their 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 downfalls this week. They're Especially cons. Especially after they gave us this whole Corbin Swagger shit, and then they don't even put it on in the main show. They put no. it on its main event. So, speaking of Randy Orton's adventures, we get to his... Backstage adventure, I guess this will be episode one of the show. What is he, in the fucking the boiler room? <laughs> yeah, he finds this arrow symbol on the wall, and he, like, turns it, 
and he hears like a noise off to the left. He's like, hmm, I'm going to go walk over there and check the noise out. The camera pans back, and the arrow's pointed the other way, and there is fucking Eric Rowan. The wonder that is Eric Rowan standing there with this new black sheep, like devilish more looking mask. He's like, okay, and then like, all right, the mask is cool. It's better than his old stupid generic white one. But I said, Eric Rowan's winner. Why wasn't Bray Wyatt there? Why the fuck did they have to include Eric Rowan into this shit? I I I, just, I know there. It, it, we've seen this before in the past with WWE, like this kind of storytelling and these kind of promos back when like Undertaker was big on SmackDown with the thing with Booker T. If anyone remembers back in 2004, a lot of scary or even shit like before that. that, like Undertaker and mankind in the boiler yeah, room that like, one time. It's, 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 it's just stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I moved past that. We ended up getting a tag team match in the women's division on SmackDown. Nikki Bella and Naomi versus Carmella or Baymella and Natalia. <laughs> this is actually a good tag team match. Good match. 10 minutes long. It was a really good a tag team match. It's showcasing both feuds. This is something Raw lacks. SmackDown, it's like, hmm, we got so many feuds here with the women's division. Everyone's in a feud. Hey, how about we take the two feuds, put them in a tag team match, and, and just and and story the, tell. Yeah, it, it story was, tell in the ring. It was great. It was perfect. Both feuds did something. This is what match. we need to see every week, and we get it on SmackDown. So we have the Natalia and Naomi feud, and then we have the Carmella and Nikki Bella That's feud. been lasting a long time. I think it's just... Carmella just plainly doesn't like Nikki Bella. I think that's what it comes. It's coming down to. Uh, it, I think it was because Carmella's homecoming to New York was spoiled by Nikki Bella's return. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that. Um, I'm loving Bay Mella's heel, though. I, I love her as a heel. <laughs> oh, I love her really as a heel. I, I'm, I'm never gonna hate this girl. Heel or face, she's always Bay Mella. <laughs> Carmella picks up the uh, the victory surprisingly with a roll up on Nikki Bella. So again, she pits him. Nikki hit, love it. Nikki hit Natalia with like that forearm thing. Yeah, and then she oh turned God. around into a roll up by Carmella. So I'm interested to see where it goes from here and what we get into leading into I'm No Mercy. They but would have, they have a one on one match at yeah. No Mercy. I think they're showcasing more of Carmella and uh, uh, Nikki Bella more than Naomi and Natty. Um, maybe well, Nikki good reason or, because Nikki's yeah. more like the biggest face yeah. on. So I think Natty and Naomi game. might have a pre show match uh, in in No Mercy. So. Um, but yeah, Nikki Bella's twice she's lost to Carmella now. Mm-hmm. That's right. Bay Mella, baby. I know she's not in the title picture, but picking up a win on the former Divas champ. Yep. Love it. So move on to actually one of the best segments on SmackDown this week, and this was unreal. We get the Miz's homecoming. Okay, this was this was shit. <laughs> this shit. <laughs> the first part. Okay, the first part. <laughs> we have pictures yeah. of the Miz. Yeah, SmackDown's in Cleveland this week for anyone who needs to know. We have pictures of Miz in the ring. Four pictures <laughs> of Miz in these in his money with his money yeah. maker in these like action shots and of him like, in the Marine. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! And it, we got a his entrance is kind of cool though. The the new stage animation now where like he stands still and it explodes underneath him and the red carpet goes down. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. And then he got up, he got on top of the got on the the turnbuckle and, he gets and pyro. Then the pyro went off. <laughs> Like, wow. And we get the video package of, like, Miz's life. It looks like it's a retirement video for like Miz. Miz. This is your life. It literally went from him as, my, as Miz yeah. and, and tough enough. To what he is now. now. And even showing him beating John Cena at wow. WrestleMania, which it I was, thought was pretty cool. It was so inspirational. I almost shed a tear in that Yeah, part. Almost. That's close. That's close. A couple of sniffs. Um, so he runs a promo about himself in, in the city of Cleveland and like the, the Cleveland Cavaliers and all that and how basically they didn't run it and have a parade with 1.3 million people for Miz when he won the IC title. He's the only, he's the only champion in Cleveland. And he starts talking about his parents and says, oh, look, Dolph Ziggler's parents are here. And he starts uh, just running his mouth with them saying, like, you guys must be so proud. And then Dolph Ziggler comes out pissed off that he and telling him he shouldn't be talking to my parents like that. And then Ziggler gets extremely emotional like almost in tears and this is probably the probably the best Dolph Ziggler promo I've ever seen like the emotion in this promo alone was you incredible you could tell it was real it wasn't some fake garbage that WWE yeah. told him here go read yeah no this was literally I don't think this was scripted this is crazy he, he was almost basically crying and he acknowledges that he, he has a, he's had a failed career and that people again and again have told him like why do you subject yourself to this shit and being that jobber guy and always losing and but Ziggler just basically says like because I love it I love being here and it, it, it's a sickness that he can't leave 
And I mean, I'm just like, man, my respect level for Ziggler is just going up and up more than what yep. I what it used to be. And just this promo is just so good. It's so good. That promo alone beat Raw this week. That promo right there just beat Raw out of the water. That's sad that Raw lost to a promo. He's saying he has nothing else but this ring and yeah. he put his career on the line for it. Yeah, and then he challenges Miz mm-hmm. to the IC, champion, IC Championship one more time. And that his, he's putting his career on the line. Wow. Holy shit. So at no mercy, it's going to be career versus title. Oh my god. That, that match alone could sell no mercy. And I think it will be because I saw the poster for No Mercy and Miz and Maurice are on it. Yep. I think that's the showcased match at No Mercy. He said he's going to walk off into the sunset either way. I wouldn't be upset if that was the main event. If the co-main event was a WWE title match and Miz and Ziggler was the main event, well, I think that would be if unreal. If it's something as important as someone's career, it should that be the should main That should be event. the main event. That is insane. If they continue from this leading to No Mercy with the hype behind it and more good promos like this, this is probably going to be feud of the year. Like, uh, unbelievable. This was so good. Like I said, it just beat that promo alone, just beat Raw out of the water. 100%. And Miz accepted. Yeah, and Miz said, accepted it. And he said, no, you can't go to Raw, you can't go to NXT. Yeah, there's no 30-day sabbatical. Yep. When I, and, if, and if you don't accept ending your career, I'll end it for you. Ooh. <laughs> and mic drops. Oh, man. This is actually a pretty good Miz, I'm going to admit. Miz right now is better than any Miz I've seen before. <laughs> This is so good. So good. I do like The Miz right yeah. now. It's perfect. I mean, well, man. no one actually likes The Miz, but, but we you got to give this guy credit. He's a heel character. Yeah, he's, he's a great character right now. Great SmackDown character. I'd watch SmackDown for The Miz. Not going to lie. Even his in wrestling product is good. Product is good. People don't give him enough credit. He's actually a good wrestler. Daniel Bryan said he's too soft. Yeah. He's too- That's just the, you know, create some heat. <laughs> but I think, seriously, Miz is a good wrestler. So move on to a really short segment and probably your favorite of the night. Becky Lynch is making her entrance and gets attacked <laughs> from behind right away. By Harley Quinn. I mean, Alexa, Alexa Bliss. Bliss. Oh, oh, man. Just like phenomenal. literally kicking the shit out of her. Grabbing her head and smashing her on the ramp like three or four times. Oh, I love the Instagram oh, photo of man. Becky's head just like laying there. And my lord, Alexa Bliss. Mm. Did I not tell you she has the sexiest like angry bitch face mm, you've ever my Bliss gosh, face ever seen? It's growing on me. It's growing on me. Every okay, week. I need to rant for a minute. She is Uh-oh. the number one contender for the women's championship. Yes, that's and correct. And she does not have one single piece of merch on the wwe shop how this is to- this is so true ladies and gentlemen why you seen does this. she not have a shirt even a shirt <laughs> or Heath anything later has shirts a poster a coffee mug a pencil nothing. she's got zero even a hair tie <laughs> nothing zero Zip. she's got no merch why we need the bliss merch come on how Corporate are we happy, supposed to take gentlemen, her seriously blissed off right merch? here how can we put her over which doesn't have merch I hope like they debut like a shirt at No Mercy for her. I know you're going to be all over that shit. <laughs> well, you know what? After No Mercy, she will get her first piece of merch. It'll be the plaque. Oh, that you title. think she's going to win it? Look at that early prediction here from Corporate Cappy. If that's Alexa how Bliss. the way she's going to have to w- get a piece of merch on the shop, then that's the way she's going to do it. Oof, that's going to be a good match, too. Leading into that match at No Mercy, I'm actually really pumped for that match. That match alone could almost steal the show. Becky and her are like unreal wrestlers. I don't think, I any, I don't think anyone anyone from Cincinnati would know because they're too casual as fuck to know that Alexa Bliss is actually a good wrestler. Alexa? Becky Lynch is actually a good wrestler. This is two good wrestlers fighting for the Women's Championship. The first title defense. Uh, I can't wait for this match. I mean, I expect Becky to retain, but... I want Alexa. Oh, I think it's going to be a good match. Either way, I'll be happy with whatever but outcome there is. I, this was really good by Alexa just to come out like as Becky's doing her entrance. My my question to you last night, though, was who is Becky supposed to face before this happens? Yeah, we wanted to know. And I'm like, I didn't see an entrance before that. They just cut right to Becky's entrance. I don't know if she's supposed to run a promo or, or talk about something, but she's in ring gear. So I don't know. So I really hope it wasn't a local job or I pray to God wasn't a local jobber. Before we move on, as much as it's been a, a, a sunny, you know, beautiful cloud or beautiful sunny day in the women's division so far in SmackDown, where's the black cloud? Where is she? Yep. Where, where is she literally it's not red anymore. It's black. She dyed her goddamn hair. Is she coming back? I don't know. Because she's not hurt. 
and her suspension is over. It's doing so well Where without her. Please. I'm scared. I am so scared for the for that match at at No Mercy. I really hope she doesn't interfere in it. <laughs> that will ruin No Mercy for me. And it's probably going to happen. I'm not going to lie. It's probably going to happen. The black cloud is slowly sailing towards No Mercy. <laughs> uh, oh. Unless unless she interferes in Carmella and Nikki. Or, I mean, it doesn't really make sense that she would, but I don't know. Why? Or maybe Natty and Naomi. You're, you're, you're just praying to God that she interferes in Natty and Naomi's feud. Yeah. Or, <laughs> as much as that boy wouldn't make sense, just <laughs> you're hoping that happens. I don't want to see her on TV, period. <laughs> And then we never we don't know what's going on with Emma if she's coming back to what yeah, brand. Yeah, we'll have to see what brand she goes she should, to. She really needs to go to Raw. Yeah. They need some more feuds. Yeah. So we end off with well, not end off the Raw their SmackDown review. We get episode two and the final episode of the Orton backstage adventure. Everyone, sit back and enjoy the storytelling right now. He starts out, or it starts out with Bray's promo, asking where it where where is he where are you, Randy? I can't see you. <laughs> and in the, the Wyatt Dimension, which is actually a locker room, if anyone needs to know, he comes up from behind, Randy Orton, wearing the white sheet mask. Oh, look, so we found the white sheet mask that Eric Owen somehow lost. And then starts beating the shit out of Bray Wyatt. I think it insinuated that Orton kicked the shit out of Eric Rowan and then took the mask. I guess, but he wasn't wearing that white mask. He's wearing the black one. <laughs> it was a black one with horns. I don't know. <laughs> And then Randy Orton sits on the chair, and then I honestly can't tell you what I just watched. <laughs> After that, like I literally thought I was tripping out. For I don't know what was going on. What ha- what was going on? <laughs> why why the- <laughs> were they showing like Randy Orton transforming because he's wearing the mask? Or yeah, is it like goosebumps where they put on the haunted mask? And he yeah, what was what person? was that? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. Why didn't we have Apollo Cruz or Baron Corbin? Why did we need to see that? <laughs> What am I watching? I don't know what I was watching. And I, I'm like, oh my god, SmackDown is doing so good up until this point. <laughs> and then, oh, why did I have to ruin that? So I, I assume they're continuing this feud into No Mercy. Yeah, it looks like you're going to continue their feud in No Mercy. And it's going to be Bray Wyatt versus Brady Orton. That's probably going to be the Hell in the Cell match at No Mercy. Oh, what am I talking about? Wow. <laughs> I just boshed hardcore there. Maybe they'll put them on Hell in the Cell. <laughs> That would make sense for them to end that feud in the Hell in a Cell match. We're probably not going to get that at No Mercy. That, but the they ending have some kind of stipulation. Yeah, match. I think that's going to be the ending, though. It's probably going to be a match in the Bray Wyatt Dimension Universe. Oh my god! <laughs> the Bray, the Wyatt wait, sorry, the compound. Compound. <laughs> uh, So we'll move on to the main event of SmackDown: AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So what a way to even end off SmackDown! Yeah, we get a got, world title match. Got, uh, the champ himself, John Cena, yeah, at ringside. ringside. Oh, Commentary, yeah. yay! Putting these tough guy wristbands on. Oh yeah, <sighs> getting all almost supercharged. <laughs> almost turned it off before it even started. So it ends up being a really, really good match, though. Really good world title match. Um, at one point near the end, Styles and Ambrose even attacked John Cena separately. Yep. <laughs> Cena gets just screwed over by both. Yeah, of them. just gets pissed off. So Styles ends up winning by roll up. So he retains the championship, and he's kind of holding the tights, too. I'm like, well, he's a heel. And then all three start beating up on each other, and then we end the show off with Cena AAing both of them. Yay! Ugh. Typical John Cena thing to do. All right, you know what? Whatever. I'd normally be pissed at this, but what, it's a good way to, to, to make John Cena look strong, making it seem like he's going to be the next 16-time Great. champion. I really hope it doesn't happen. I hope he doesn't win the title at No Mercy. It's just AJ Styles retains. Because like, AJ Styles, the champion right now, is gold. Pure gold. He, has, it, he can't lose it on his first title defense at Mm-mm. a pay-per-view. Can't happen like that. No. No. Not happening. But other than that, SmackDown, I'm giving a total score this week. Of seven point five out of ten. Um, you know there was no milkman this week, which I was upset about. Don't tell me you go lower than seven point five because of that. If you do, I'm ending the show right now. Um, Alexa Bliss attacking Becky Lynch before the match. Eight point five. Whoa, big 8. score 5 this out week. So I clear really cut winner this week, SmackDown. Because I did not watch Raw. From what I've heard, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, SmackDown, I did watch, and it was really good. Hundred percent. So yeah, SmackDown wins, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Yeah, sound effect. Yeah. Uh, good for SmackDown. <laughs> 
Uh, man, Raw sucked ass this week. Bottom line, Raw Terrible. just plainly sucked Honestly, ass. Honestly, I want to watch Raw for Sasha, but I really don't want to watch it anymore. Mm. I really don't care about anyone else on that show. Oh, it sucks because we have so we have some of our 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 boys and like our girls on that show, and we, it sucks when we can't watch it because it's so bad. Like I want to see Jericho and Enzo and Cass, and that's probably about it. Yeah. So we'll have to see if it gets better in the upcoming weeks. It, it it's really blissing me off right now. <laughs> really blissing you off, eh? Yeah. So we'll get into the last part of the show, guys, and that is a WWE headlines. Right, welcome to WWE Headlines, guys, where we talk about any important news in the WWE, and we got a few topics here for you. One, an update on the WWE TNA status. PEW Insider is now reporting, sources have noted, that WWE has been back in the mix and has had talks regarding the purchase of TNA for about five the past five days. Um, there's still a chance that Billy Corgan can make a deal happen. But PW Insider believes the fuse on the TNA bomb is close to the end. The report adds something or someone is going to have to give in soon, and there's no avoiding it. A note, as noted, it should be it should be a very interesting week of TNA as it heads into Bound for Glory, as their pay per view and subsequent TNA tapings will have to be funded, and it remains to be seen if that will be the re- if that will rest in the hands of potential new buyers. See, this could be the, the end. This could be the last week of TNA. Why does WWE want TNA? Because it, I know they're not competition, but there's talent on the TNA roster that WWE can buy. Well, they're just going to like scrap TNA. They're not going to have another show. They're just no. going to take the talent and I heard they want they Ma- want the uh, archives of f- all the former matches ah, with, like Kurt Angle okay. and AJ Styles and yeah. all that. They want the archives of all the videos. So that's probably why. And it'll say everyone else see you later. They want more network. Yeah. Um, more Good luck network in your content. future endeavors. Bye. It'll be weird not to have TNA around. I know. I mean, I, mean, I don't even as watch much it, they're but... not good. <laughs> and it's god awful, man. I've tried watching sometimes, and I'm like, the only thing I could put TNA over with is that they're allowed to, they let the wrestlers do moves and allow blood on TV more than WWE does. Like, I've seen a package pile driver done by a woman on Impact Wrestling. You can't see that on, on WWE. They 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 let the the wrestlers have freedom, more freedom on that show, in order in a in an attempt to be better than there would be, and it it doesn't work that way though. No, as much as you can let wrestlers do whatever they want, no, nope. you can't you can't beat it. I don't want Matt Hardy or Jeff Hardy coming over. And we'll like I want to know how much like WWE is offering to buy that company. There is a figure, and I forget what it was, but it's it's not that much. It's it's like pocket change for Vince. <laughs> Is it as bad as what WCW was, a million dollars? I think it was more than that. (laughs) Um, Next bit of news. There are some more details on the Ryback negotiation with Bellator MMA. As noted, former WWE star Ryback appears on a Los Angeles, Las Vegas, sorry, radio show and revealed that he is currently in talks with Bellator MMA promotion and is open to fighting. He's gone off the rails. He's like changing his, his name to legal name to Ryback. Yeah, he's just losing it. Bellator CEO Scott Coker uh, confirmed to 4W Online, for uh, sorry, F4W Online, that the two sides have spoken, but there's nothing close to being signed. It was said that the 35-year-old is interested in fighting, but the decision ultimately will come down to money, as opposed to a simple desire to fight. In the case of CM Punk. Okay, so cool, right back. That's nice. That's that's so neat. Oh. <laughs> We want to see the big guy in the octagon. No thanks. Last bit of news. We had a little exchange of Twitter chatter between Daniel Bryan and Cesaro this week, if anyone missed it. Daniel Bryan tweeted that. Dear Cesaro, when does your Raw contract end? We'd love to have you on SmackDown Live. Daniel Bryan, and he, he replies to Daniel Bryan, says, at Daniel Bryan, I'll look into it. Oh, is so maybe this, we could have another is this free fake? agent coming over. Is, is this uh, just to stir the pot a little bit? But I think Cesaro's going to be on SmackDown one way or another in probably the next month. Wouldn't you? Look what he's got on Raw. Look he's teaming with Sheamus. Oh, yeah. I really want to see that more than being on SmackDown where he's going to get an opportunity. 
God! I, but I love how they're incorporating Twitter with this. Trying yeah. to get everyone involved. Exactly. Um, um, I uh, Another piece of new, Del Rio made his debut oh, yeah, overseas. That's right. And that's where uh, people said Paige was going to return to Clash of Champions and all that. And I guess uh, she the suspension wasn't... suspension didn't end until it, the next day. Yeah. Uh, she was actually even there in the weekend watching his first match. So she wanted to be even close to where yeah, because Clash he, Champions he was. he faced her brother in a match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, so who knows? I know Paige is not leaving WWE, but who knows when the hell she's going to come back. Who knows? I know she's still recovering from an injury, so... I don't know when the next time I'm going to see my girl Paige. We'll see. <laughs> the The shrine will have to wait. Yep, the shrine will have to <laughs> wait to be added to. But other than that, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Week number 25, we are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw. Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week, as well as our Twitter poll segment, the Luke Gallows Polls and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Speaker, except for this episode, at speaker.com slash NHBWP, and after it is done, it is posted on all our outlets, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment, and it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join the conversation and have your thoughts, opinions, and questions read on the podcast, tweet us at Noel's Bar WP or by dropping a comment in the comment section on YouTube. As always, I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, and I am continued every week to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful Corporate Tappy. I like that. I want to be the. I want to be known as the blissful for now. Okay. On. You, now you on, can I will be afraid. glorious. Okay. I'll I want to be, be blissful. <laughs> Um, and I also want to just say that uh, my solo show, I'll be doing it monthly, Ooh, not weekly. Nice. So it'll be so like there's a an monthly, update. So it's good. I'll, I'm going to try to do it this weekend because okay. it's the end of September. So ah. I'll try to get the first episode. So guys, guys, tune in for that. Cover Cappy's debut single show. And yes, guys, that's it. And we're going to leave it off as we always do and reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Sorry, that, but what you gonna do?